what's up developers welcome back to my channel where we explore the cutting edge of web development today we are diving into a game changer for client side data fetching in nextjs 14 the swr library if you are building applications with nextjs you know how crucial is it it is to fetch and manage data efficiently that's where SWR comes in, offering a powerful set of tools to handle caching, revalidation, focus tracking, and more. And with the new app directory structure in Next.js 14, we have got a whole new way to leverage SWR's capabilities. So grab your favorite coding snack and let's explore how to master SWR in Next.js 14 with the app directory. Trust me, this tutorial is going to be game changer for your Next.js development workflow. SWR short for stale while revalidate is a react hook library that makes client side data fetching a breeze developed by team behind Next.js. SWR takes care of caching, revalidation, focus, tracking, refetching on intervals and more, making your life as developer much easier. With SWR, you don't have to worry about managing the state of your data fetching process. It does all the heavy lifting for you, ensuring your application always has the freshest data while providing a smooth user experience. Before we dive into SWR, let's set up our Next.js 14 project with the app directory structure. This new directory structure is a game changer, offering better performance, improved developer experience, and a more modular approach to building Next.js applications. So this command creates a new Next.js 14 project with the app directory structure enabled. Once the project is set up, we will explore the differences between the app directory and the traditional pages directory. The app directory offers a more flexible and scalable approach to organizing your application components, making it easier to manage complex applications. Now let's dive into the heart of this tutorial using SWR in client components within the app directory structure. First, we will install the SWR package. So open your project and within the root directory of your project, run the command npm install SWR press enter. Next, we will create client component, for example, app slash dashboard page dot tsx where we will fetch data from an API using use SWR hook and the fetcher function provided by SWR. So in the app directory, I will create a file with that path app slash dashboard slash page.tsx. Okay. Now we will create a client component. So let's add use client. And after that, I will type this short command this will automatically create the skeleton of my component okay now let's import the use swr now we will define the fetcher function here okay so this is my fetcher function next within the component i will define a constant with the name data and error so we are basically destructuring the response of this function call use swr and we're passing the fetcher and here you can pass the remote URL as well, like, okay. So after that, I will check if there is error, then we will return a div with the message failed to load. And if there is no data, then we will simply say that it is still being loaded. And once we have the data, we will return the actual content. So let me add some content within that, save it. Okay, once that is done, let's go to the browser and try to access that dashboard page by adding slash dashboard after the base URL. I made a mistake here. Uh, I created the app folder inside the app folder. That's why it did not work. So let's fix it. I, am, I have moved the dashboard folder back to the main app folder. So let's remove this app directory. Now you can see that data is visible that is coming from the remote URL. In this example, we are using use SWR hook to fetch data from that remote endpoint. The fetcher function is responsible for making the actual HTTP request and parsing the response as JSON. SWR takes care of the rest, handling caching, revalidation and error 
states for us. So if there is an error fetching the data, we display a failed to load message. If the data is still being fetched, we show loading message. Once the data is available, we render it in our component. Okay, so now you can see when I reload this page, there is a fetch request that is going to this endpoint to get the users. But let's suppose if there is another component and if that component also tries to get the same endpoint, uh, then it will not send another request. It will instead use the data from the cache. So let me show you what I mean. Global.scss that was generated for now because it will now show the default styling from the browser. Okay, you can see that all users are being displayed. Okay, so next I'm going to create a component here. And within that component, I'm going to create a file, maybe card.tsx. You can create any one. This is just to show you demo. So now I will create a component and let's export it in this way. And now here I will do the same thing that I did here. I will use the use SWR and paste it on the top. And obviously this is going to be a client side component for that. I will add use client and then I will create this same fetcher here as well okay and then here i will use the use swr hook in the same way again okay and now i will add the same content here as well with little modifications in it to make it different like card and here we can just add style just to make it different like background color and color white okay and now uh, let's go back to the dashboard page and here I will add a button. If we click on that button, we will display, we will load that uh, card component. So load card and here I will add the on click event that will load card. So now we need to create a function, uh, function load card. And here I need to create a state so card will have that false value by default and here i will import the card component from our components folder and based on the condition if card is true then show it okay now let's implement the logic here we just set the value of the card state to true when we call the load card and that function would be called when we click on the load card button okay now let's go to the browser and let me clear everything here so let me reload it from scratch and you can see i got a request in the network that is going to the user's endpoint and there below i have the button okay i basically make made it toggle so if it is true it will make it false uh, or it will make it false if it is true uh, or it will it will make it reverse whatever value is so now let me reload it i reloaded that click on that load card you can see that it uh, fetched users and when i clicked on the load card it did not send the second request to the user so that's mean it was saved in the cache and second time when it tried to get the users it picked the data from the cache now i will show you the difference that if my card component is not using SWR, then it will definitely make a second request. So before doing that, let's, let's re repeat the process just to make sure you can see I clicked on that and it, it did not send a second request. So now let's go back here. And this time I'm going to uh, comment it out and let's comment this as well. And we have to add the use effect this time. Okay. And we have to import the use effect and we have to mount, uh, call this function when the component is mounted for that I have passed the empty array and now uh, by the way let me create a state okay by default we have empty array in the data and now we have set the data with the new re uh, received data from this endpoint save it let's reload it and you see there is a user request if you click on that you will get another request immediately so it is not using the it is not using the cache you can see whenever i click on that it sends a 
new request actually these are three requests that are being sent okay so that's why uh, you can optimize your app by using the cache with the help of the use swr so now let's revert it back and see the difference again so i am going to again like that okay now we need to import this hook uh, this use swr again now let's reload it and i will show you if i click on that you see that data has been, has been loaded from cache and there is no additional request so while swr works great out of the box you might want to configure some global settings such as cache options providers or fallback data that's where the swr config component comes in however since the app directory in nextjs 14 uses the server components by default we can't import the swr config directly into our server component pages so instead we will create a separate swr provider client component to set up the provider and configuration and then use it in our server component pages so let's do that so in the app directory i'm going to create a file swr-provider.tsx and on the top i will add use client and below that i will import the swr config and now we will use the built-in map object for cache for caching so let's create a constant cache provider is equal to new map okay now let's create our component export const swr provider and this will receive children and let me add the type here any for now and now i will return the swr config component as the response and within that i will pass the children and we will pass the attribute value to it and here we will optionally configure the global swr settings like provider the cache provider and fetcher is this one so in this example we created a swr provider component that wraps the sw our config from the SWR library. Here we are using the built-in map object as the cache provider and defining the fetcher function for making HTTP request and parsing the responses response as JSON. Now we can use this SWR provider component in our server comp component pages. So let's go back to the dashboard and here before returning anything, you can uh, wrap this in the SWR provider or you can go to the layout and you can add this at that place so that it would be available throughout your application. So let's add it here instead. And here I will add SWR provider. Make sure to import it from the file that you created earlier and let's move the children inside that. So now all of your components that uh, are children of this will be using SWR, okay? So by wrapping our components with the SWR provider, we ensure that all SWR hooks within those components will use the configured settings. So now let's quickly test it. So in this provider, uh, we are using the fetcher. We are give, providing it the fetcher. So that means we don't have to specify fetcher every time. So like this, here we have created a fetcher. I can just get rid of that and remove it. So in this way, it will use uh, the default fetcher function that we gave to it in, in the configuration. Now let's go back here and let's reload it and see if it is still working. Okay, you can see that it is still working. Everything is still working fine. But this time you see that when I click on the load card, it sends a new request to the users. Okay, so here we have to get rid of the fetcher here as well. Save it. Now reload it. So now you saw that we don't need to uh, uh, write that repetitive line that we repeat every time when you want to use swr so we just configured it at one single place and now it is being available throughout your application for now i will get rid of this uh, custom provider for the cache because i want it to use its own uh, implementation for it so now let's reload it and you can see it is working perfectly fine SWR is not just for fetching data, it also provides a handy hook called use SWR mutation for handling mutations like updates and deletion, etc. 
and automatically revalidate the cache. So here we are using the use SWR mutation to define a mutation function, update user data. This function makes a put request to the slash API slash user endpoint with the updated user data. When we call the trigger function with the updated data, SWR automatically updates the cache for the endpoint with the new data. SWR, SWR also provides a hook called use SWR infinite for handling infinite loading scenarios such as infinite scrolling or pagination. So in this example, we are using use SWR infinite to fetch and render paginated data for the endpoint that we specified. The get key function generates the appropriate SWR key for each page and use SWR infinite handles fetching and caching the data for us. These are just few examples of advanced features SWR offers. There are many more such as intercepting request, broadcasting cache updates and more which you can explore in SWR documentation or I would also record more dedicated videos about these micro topics and we will look into that in more depth with more practical examples. All right, that was quite a journey. We have covered a lot of ground today from setting up Next.js 14 with the app directory structure to mastering SWR for efficient client side data fetching. With SWR, you now have a powerful tool in your arsenal to build lightning fast data driven applications with Next.js. Whether you are fetching data from APIs, handling mutations or implementing infinite loading, SWR has got you covered. Remember, the key to building great web applications is combining the right tools and techniques by leveraging the power of Next.js 14 and SWR. You are well on your way to creating amazing user experiences. If you found this tutorial valuable, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more exciting content on React, Next.js and web development. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below and I will be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching and happy coding. Goodbye.